delighted to be speaking to Alison McFadden, Group Head Internal Audit at Standard Chartered Bank. The Chartered IIA and Protivity are collaborating on a project exploring both organisational and internal audit reactions to a disruptive scenario. Alison, we've spoken previously and you also attended one of our disruption roundtables. So I'm really looking forward to hearing about your innovative approach to the recent pandemic, one of the most significant global disruptions for some significant period of time. So my first question, what were the immediate challenges from the pandemic? Well, my goodness, what a lot of challenges the pandemic did bring us. Um, in Standard Chartered, we have offices all around the world. And so we saw it starting um, in Wuhan. We have branches in Wuhan. We saw China going into lockdown. Uh, we saw just on a local basis, um, you know, the impact it was starting to have. But I can honestly say that I don't think we really got it in the rest of the world. We just thought, oh, how awful in China it must be um, to be working from home. Uh, to have to cancel some of the audit plan, to have to deal with this crisis. Um, I don't think it was really till it spread around the world that we realised quite what a challenge it actually is. It doesn't. It's not until it actually happens to us uh, that we realised perhaps the extent of the challenge that we were all going to have to really deal with. And, and you know, we all know massive challenges. I, I think perhaps um, an immediate challenge was the human cost, um, both actual cost in terms of lives and sickness, but actually the mental health challenge, the fear that we all dealt with, homeschooling that everybody had to deal with, um, not seeing parents. So, so there was a real sort of human challenge. Uh, and then, of course, there was the, the business challenge. And from an audit perspective, it was the fact that our auditees were, you know, the last thing they needed was audit coming in and, and doing an audit on them. Um, we were also uh, operating at a lower productivity. <clears throat> and um, I think we also saw that the risks were increasing, but complete, in completely different ways. So we had to respond to the fact that we had different risks. Uh, we had a human challenge. And uh, what we didn't know at the time was that this was going to go on for a long time. So... I think the organisational response uh, to the challenges, I mean, first of all, when it first happened in China, uh, it was very much localised crisis management. Uh, and then, then as that spread, each country went into crisis management mode. And then, of course, we realised this was a group crisis. So we had to institute the group crisis plans, um, which involved, you know, for a very long period of time, uh, 7 a.m. meetings every day. Um, and just how are we going to deal with uh, the operational risks, the credit risks, the, the, the new risks that were emerging, you know, how were people going to answer the phones? What were we doing with branches? Um, how do we get laptops out to uh, a whole load of people? I think at one point we had to ship something like 72,000 laptops out to various members of staff around the world, uh, which they got incredibly quickly. Um, increasing things like VPN capability, rolling out collaborative tools. Um, so the crisis response was, you know, it affected everybody within the organisation and everybody within their own skill set was having to deal with uh, the crisis that was unfolding. I think we had the benefit in Standard Chartered of probably having watched it and learned. We learned a lot from the way Christ, uh, China handled it. I think also Asia, who'd, who'd dealt with SARS previously, had quite good protocols already in place and dashboards in place for dealing with this sort of uh, crisis. Um, I think from a third line point of view, we um, we realised we had to tear up our audit plan pretty quickly. So we did that at the beginning of uh, Q2 last year. And we said, actually, it makes no sense for us to carry on blindly doing our audit plan when the risks have changed and it, and it just doesn't make sense. Um, and we really needed to develop something different. We wanted to use our skills to add value to the rest of the organisation rather than just shut up shop and say, OK, we won't do audits or we'll just lend you staff. We thought, let's use our skills and do valid third line work, uh, but it needs to be different work. 
from from what we've done before. So it was it needed to be a different response. Innovation was actually quite a surprising outcome of, of this. And, and I say surprising because certainly in our organisation, but I think this is true for other organisations when I've spoken to my counterparts, actually the third line proved it could be innovative and respond really quickly. And I'm not sure that people expected internal audit to be quite so innovative. Um, but I, from talking to my counterparts, we all did something pretty similar. So the innovations that we came up with, we, we put a SWAT team together to say, what, what's the new product that we need to uh, produce? So it's not the old audit that's going to take you know, 90 days, 100 days to, to deliver. We need to do short, sharp pieces of work and give information to management about the controls that were working and weren't working. So we put a SWAT team together and they came up with, in our organisation, something called the risk response, which I know is very similar to what many people did. Um, and this risk response varied really across uh, the types of work we were doing. So we might be looking at something really low level like, I don't know, social distancing in a branch versus fraud risks across the whole organisation. But each risk response was very, very simple. It was short, it was sharp, and it just had a few headings. What have we done? What do we like? Because we thought actually in this environment, it's really important to tell people what's going well. People need that. Uh, confirmation. Uh, what are we watching? So what's kind of on the watch list and what do you need to fix? And it was really simply written, not loads of jargon. Um, and so we produced that new concept. We also had to do a very quick risk assessment of, you know, where do we need to go looking? Um, so we worked very closely, more closely, I think, than we ever have done before with the first and second lines uh, to work out what were the areas that we should go and have a look, do this short, sharp piece of work. Um, and uh, we delivered, I think, something like 130 risk responses during the course of the pandemic. And it's a tool that we're keeping in our toolbox now because we found it actually hugely valuable. And there is a place for that when we have to do short, um, kind of really informative work, but in a, in a, in a quick fashion. I think inspiration really came from a number of places, but, but mostly it came from our own internal audit team. I was really surprised and delighted by the fact that you know, people just were um, willing to get involved and had some really interesting ideas. We knew we needed to do something different. We knew we, knew we needed to um, risk assess the organization quickly. We, need, we needed a new product. And there's something quite interesting that happens I think in a crisis and that's everybody gets this injection of adrenaline and there's something about adrenaline that makes us all operate at a, at a higher level so I think most of the inspiration really came from our own teams. Uh, I would also say we got inspiration from external, I really valued collaborating with my counterparts in other organisations, hearing what they were doing, picking up ideas. Uh, also also from our own HR department, lots of inspiration comes. There was a lot of stuff around mental health, which I know every organization did, but we really uh, took inspiration on how we uh, talk to staff, uh, think about the mental health challenges. One of the things we said to all of our teams was, um, you know, everybody's in a different situation. You know, I knew that I don't have children, don't have any demands on my time, so I could work from morning to night, um, uh, maybe different challenges, but I knew that my hours were fine. Whereas I can remember talking to a, a, a colleague who had two children under the age of five, uh, one of whom had learning difficulties, and her husband was on the front line in the US um, as a policeman. And, I, and she literally couldn't do, you know, if she did an hour's work, it was heroic. So we did a lot around saying to people, just be honest, you know, say what you can reasonably do and what you can't reasonably do, as long as we know that's fine. And there was something really kind of nice and, and human and caring about checking in with people, understanding their own personal situations, people working flexibly and so on. So uh, inspiration came from a number of a number of places. The kind of nature of the surprises changed. Uh, if, if I kind of think more recently, uh, 
it's been about the loss of adrenaline, in fact. You know, you, you, there was a wonderful surprise about how amazing everybody is when they've got a burst of adrenaline. Uh, I, I think one of the unplanned things and the surprise was actually what happens when that adrenaline goes on, when this crisis goes on and on and on. People's resilience gets lower and lower. And maybe it's not a surprise, but it's it was something we had to be really conscious of and still conscious of that we, every time there's a new lockdown, and although in the UK we are coming out of lockdown slowly, hopefully, uh, other parts of the world are going back into lockdown. And the situation in India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Taiwan's going back into lockdown, Singapore's gone back into, going back into a lockdown. People's resilience, I think, each time gets less and less and, and and we have to remember um the impact and the human toll that has so i i finding actually it's more difficult strangely um as people go back into third or fourth waves uh, it's more it's increasingly difficult to keep people engaged and motivated uh, another surprise actually is how effective we can be in working virtually i'm, I'm not sure that any of us thought that we could ever do auditing uh, in a completely virtual environment and so that's been a really great uh, piece of news that we can work virtually very effectively but also actually we I think we've learned the value of face-to-face -face. we're all really missing uh, that face-to-face -face contact and so I think the wonderful thing is we can have both in the future and that's been a, a really lovely um, thing to learn um, from a business point of view and things we discovered out in the in in, in the businesses the things people will do under pressure. So uh, we, some of our audit issues were interesting that um, we had one where there was a breakdown of segregation of duties, for instance, where staff were trying to do the right thing for the customers, but in totally the wrong way and ended up sharing passwords. And so we had sort of surprising behaviors coming through, actually not for bad reasons, for all the right reasons, um, but interesting sort of, um, what people will do when under pressure um, uh, it can be quite surprising. Firstly, I've learned that improbable events do happen. I have the dubious honour of being somebody who took pa pandemic off our risk radar two years before we actually went into a pandemic, thinking it's really not going to happen. Um, so it's, it's worth remembering in audit that probability, even if it's really low, these things do happen and they and they really do hurt. Uh, another learning, I think, is that we can work flexibly. Uh, I talked before about, you know, we can work virtually. We can also work different hours. Um, and that is something we will definitely take into the future. We're, we're all signing up for, say, two days or three days to be in the office. And that, that will that will stay with us. I've learned that internal audit can be incredibly nimble when they need to be, and they can respond to a fast changing world, which was, which was a fantastic lesson to learn. I also learned that internal audit has really, really smart people uh, who want to do the right thing, uh, which has is, which is, again been a fantastic lesson to learn. Um, another learning I think has been the human challenge. It, it's not all about the technical challenge. It, the learning is the importance of the human stuff we do, the mental health stuff that we do, the well-being things that we think about, checking in, collaboration, uh, understanding people's highs and lows. Uh, I, I think we've come out of this a much more human function, and hopefully, in the industry, hopefully that's an industry-wide phenomenon. So I think, with the advantage of hindsight, I wouldn't have taken pandemic off of our risk radar. Um, I would, when we restarted our plan, so we tore up our audit plan, I think at the, at the kind of height of the crisis in, in Q2 last year, I, I, I think I underestimated the, the restart uh, and how, how uh, disruptive that was. So we, we put too many audits into the end of last year, um, really not thinking through, not really understanding a couple of things. A, it's quite difficult to restart an audit plan, and B, people were still operating at less than full capacity. People were tired, people were still homeschooling, uh, and so if I had my time again, I would have cut our audit plan in the, in the second half of the, half of the year because I think it, it was too much to do. Um, I would have 
another thing I would do is when something's happening in another country, try to internalize that and really understand what it must be like and what it must feel like. Because I, I, I will honestly say I didn't really get it till it came to the UK. Uh, I, I didn't have enough sympathy or empathy as it was uh, going through Asia. So if I had my time again, I would have understood that better uh, and been more sympathetic. Um, and, and obviously, if it was a pandemic, I would not think we're going to come out of this in two months. I would be planning for waves two, waves three, waves four, uh, and so on. Um, but I think in the main, there wasn't a great deal I would change. I think it was a fantastic response to a really difficult period.